with this gap, that we fill this gap, so that we let an intern to be an intern. Okay. Yes. Why then are you proposing a separate remuneration from the one that was in the CBA? If they're interns and they're not supposed to be remunerated because they're interns, they're not employees. Why as you, and I'll bring up the um, Minister of Health Secular, what was circulated that went to the SRC now. Why then do you recommend payment to these people that you've described as non-employees? Why then? One, I take recognition of what they do while they're in hospitals. I know that we have a gap, so they're expected to do some work. I take recognition of that. And that is why, if you look at what we have suggested, we were given a minimum and a maximum. I went for the maximum. Ideally, if we had a perfect ideal situation with enough doctors in, in, the, in the facilities, an intern ought not to be paid. But that, why? That because that is not... labor laws, not to pay interns who are doing a job. An there's intern a minimum is a pay. stipend. Yes, there's a, yes, stipend or minimum. Yes, yes a stipend. Yeah. Yes. So have you looked at what they were getting previously? 200, mostly 206. 206 is 150. Thousand. Let's bring them up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 206,000 consolidated. Yes, consolidated. Now, that is one of the reasons why that CBA could not have been implemented in full. If you look at our numbers that we are graduating right now, they are not the same numbers that we used to graduate many years ago. If you look at our fiscal space as a country, we are constrained. Mm -hmm. The standards are we should be able to spend at least 15% of our budget on the health sector. As a country, collectively now, if you take county and national government, we are doing 11%. Mm -hmm. So there's a deficit of 4%. Until we are able to meet this gap, mm -hmm. Ken Mejungu. And that is why we have to change on how we finance healthcare. I'm not convinced. I am not convinced because at the end of the day, so long as they are in hospitals, they have entitlement. But let me ask you this. Medical interns, as you describe them, are not public servants, they are not state officers. Why did you ask the SRC to give you that minimum and maximum? Why did you go to SRC? I have a letter, I wrote to Treasury, that this is what we have been giving interns. I have a budget gap of 4.9 billion. The response that I got from Treasury is that we have a tight physical space. So it's Can you manage mm -hmm. the numbers that you have? Okay. In fact, they say, can you consider unpaid internship? You know? Treasury said that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as a policy maker, as a decision maker, I have to look back and say, okay, what have they told me? That I have resources, I have to work within the available resources. And by law, you cannot give somebody outside the available resources. You must have resources by the time you are placing them. So I looked at the resources that I have, and we checked across the region what else are interns being given. You compared across we compared, the region? Yes. And I also compared with other interns within the country, and we settled on the numbers that we have now. Against a registered CBA? 